And then uh, in Fairhope, uh, you know, we on the RIP report just uh, Wednesday, wonderful Wednesday, was oil slick. And we featured the BP guy on the paddle board. And he didn't seem to have a sense of humor about it because one of the things we pointed out was that he's monitoring his site and editing it and dropping people. So if you go to the site, some of us, like me, I, I don't think he likes me, it will, you will only see share. It will not have any way that you can comment or any way that you can interchange and ask a question. So, uh, and then, the and then Harry, but there's Harry, no way to post anything to the page. Okay. Look, the other thing too was this came up. It's in oil slick. Go to ripreport.com and you can read it. <laughs> but the other thing was they were proposing a pledge called good vibes. Okay. Now this good vibes pledge is a long pledge and they wanted the mayor and the council and Fairhope to sign it. So where everybody would be nice and sweet to each other, wouldn't talk about their past, wouldn't bring up anything out of their closet, wouldn't challenge them on anything that they have already done. Okay. Well, good, good vibe sounds to me like a reason to try to, you know, completely quelch any questions. That's what that's about, you know? So the good vibes thing, I don't think uh, it's going to go over well. And then the BP guy, he just immediately violated his own good vibes <laughs> and started talking about the mayor and get this, Harry. Now this guy's running for a uh, mayor. Well, usually if somebody runs for one office, you don't endorse another candidate. You know what I mean? You run your own race and you don't, you don't really jump on the bandwagon of somebody else running, but he's fully endorsing um, Mr. Burrell, who's facing a female candidate, Deb Hopkins, who's going to really give him a run for his money. And I hope she gets I in. So. Uh, need a woman on the council. And then uh, there's a Mr. Howell Gibbons running against one of the other bees, the brown one. And then uh, Joshua uh, Gammon is running against Mr. Boone, who is the grandfather ca catalyst, the uh, father of uh, Scott Boone. So <clears throat> there's all kind of interrelationships there in Fairhope, you might say. Public participation. If you have anything else to bring forth before the council, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name's John Manellis. I live at 104, sitting in the comfort of my home watching the work session, but wanted to come up here to uh, say a couple words to, uh, to you folks. Uh, Making the bigger point. Why ain't you gonna press the flesh, Pappy? Do a little politicking? I'll press your flesh, you with a son bitch. You don't tell your Pappy how to cut the electorate. We ain't one at a time in here. We're mass communicating. Oh, yes. That's a powerful new force. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Junior. And the city's gone through a difficult time. But I wanted to extend my uh, thanks, and I'm, I'm sure I reflect the thanks of a lot of the citizens in Fairhope. And this goes to you, Mayor. It goes to you, uh, Council President Burrell. It goes to each of you, City Council members and the 300 plus employees of the city. Through all of this that we've gone through over the past several months, my light stayed on. Um, I had gas and water. My garbage was picked up routinely. Um, I was able to go out and, and enjoy many of the uh, parks that we have. Uh, the streets were well maintained. The flowers have never looked more beautiful in the eight years that I've lived here. Um, and fire and police services were maintained, all essential services that we often take for granted. The bottom line is you folks kept this city going and provided these necessary services under difficult cir circumstances. Hopefully you resist the temptation to go on Facebook and look at all the uh, the comments from the cheap seats, I call them the coward seats, um, uh, and it's always easy to criticize from afar, but I tend to look at things as uh, half full as opposed to half empty. Um, it's not the easiest time to be an elected official in this country. Uh, you've often been asked to put on a health hat, uh, a science hat, 
and you have, risked, you have resisted the temptation to put MD by your name and delve into that area, and rather you followed the recommendations of the governor and her health staff in, um, in determining what was best for our city, and you've done so in a very good job. I know you didn't always agree, but these were minor things that you worked through. that view this at a later time, realize how remarkable it is as you see nationwide cities and states uh, clamoring for federal assistance in their budgets. We, we, we are in a good position here in the city of Fairhope. We are, we are in a good financial position. And that doesn't happen by accident. It happened because of the work that you all did and specifically the mayor going back to her directors and saying, what can we defer for now uh, and put off for a later time so that we don't have to go into the red? And those are important things. So on behalf of myself and on behalf of many out there that uh, probably maybe hopefully the silent majority that are thankful for the things that you do, uh, I just wanted to say thank you. It's well deserved. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We tried our best to cut your services, but we couldn't. I couldn't get the support. Francis Rip, two two nine eight five High Ridge Road, representing the Rip Report. Um, glad to see public participation is back. Um, I didn't see anywhere else in the state where they barred it from any meetings. Usually they canceled the meeting entirely. Um, as far as the pandemic goes, I hope everybody realizes that we're up. Alabama's up 50% tonight at 5.30 on CBS News. Uh, Mayor Maddox said that they were up 100% tonight, again on the same news station. Montgomery said that they now cannot take any more ICU patients. They're sending them to um, Birmingham. And there are people predicting a spike between June 3rd and June 6th because of the overflow crowds that we've had for the last couple of weeks. So I hope you keep that in mind. Um, you know, I don't understand why council president has to be the one to negotiate all these things all the time when we have a lawyer and a banker Seems like you guys would share some of this negotiation. And the last negotiation was a recreational property where we went from a surplus of money to now a deficit. Of course, we couldn't foresee the pandemic, but that's part of being, you know, in, in, in this business. The one thing I want to talk about mostly tonight is the Paula Denardi case and McSherry. Uh, now this with McSherry has been going on for over 10 years. I've advocated for three different people in the McSherry case. And Mr. McSherry is a public nuisance. This has been going on 10 years. He has an established police record. He's also a green card holder, for Christ's sakes. This council owes it to Ms. Denardi uh, some sort of explanation or you're going to find yourself sued. And the other thing is, I've come to numerous meetings where when you give an ABC license, you ask the police chief or you ask the police, are there any comments? Is there any reason this person shouldn't have their license? What's going on here? This has been going on 10 years. Is this how we treat women? This is on video. And then we failed, Mr. McDowell, failed from the beginning to the end on this thing, and the assault charge is supposed to go away. I find it interesting that the assault charge is going to go away when the assault charge would have taken away his license. Now we're being told that the intoxication charge is the same sentence, so it would be the same thing, and we don't have to charge him for the assault. This woman's got $6,500, $7,000 worth of medical bills that were presented to the city immediately. And nothing's happened. 
So now the citizens of this community expect that the municipal judge, the circuit judge, the municipal attorney, everybody erred in this to where Mr. McSherry walks. I can tell you right now, 10 years ago when I started this and it was Mick Sherry, I told him, I said, he'll do it again, and he did. And then it was Nall, and I said, watch, he'll do it again, and he did. And now it's Paula Donardi. And in between there, he did it four or five times where he walked out or citizens didn't press charges. I think you're in a very bad position, and this looks horribly bad. I think the council should take some sort of action on this. Every one of these charges with McSherry are alcohol related. Every single one. And everyone except Nall involves a woman. Don't tell me we can't do better than this. This is you, this is the council, this is on you. You can do something about this. And you should. I hope that you will read Untimely Filed in the Lanyap and that you've been following this case in the Lanyap because they are printing some very, very disturbing facts in here. We're not hearing anything from anybody as a justification or explanation of what went on. Also hope you read the, the Straw Man series in Lanyap because you'll see some of my future allegations starting to pop up by other people in court involving members of the council. On the McSherry case, you need to do something. This is not right, it's not fair, it's not justice, and it's a very, very bad look as to how we treat women in this town. And it's on video, for Christ's sakes. I'm gonna to add to that and be on record that I did ask uh, Marcus, our city attorney, to recuse himself from this case because his firm uh, dropped the ball on it uh, with his wife and I knew it was gonna happen and here we are today. It's, it is absolutely deplorable. There is no excuse for it and we have to do better. There's no excuse for it. Did you want to make some comments, yeah, Mr. McDowell? Both to the mayor and to uh, Mr. Rip, I, I, I could explain criminal procedure and criminal law to you, but uh, to be honest with you, I can't make you ever understand it because you don't want to. It's a political issue for both of you, and uh, there, are, there are criminal issues that are still proceeding against Mr. McSherry, Rule 15.1, Alabama Rules of Criminal Procedure, <coughs> allow us to refile this. We plan on refiling it. Out of the 60, 70,000 cases that I've dealt with over the last 10 to 12 years in this city, I have never drafted or authored one complaint, not one. It is not my job to do it. I did not do it in this case. You I missed the deadline. Mayor, I'm talking. You missed the deadline. No, Mayor, that's not right. Yes, I you did. I dismissed the appeal because it is quicker to get this case to trial if we go back and refile it as a new complaint, the rules of criminal procedure, again, I've told you, I can explain. No, you haven't told me anything because you don't talk to me. I just said that to you. I can tell you that. I will never make you understand it because you don't want to understand it. Okay? Anyway, you always tell me I don't understand something and it is the most ridiculous ahead. thing ever our because I have other attorneys looking at this and they know that what is going on is wrong. You haven't talked to an attorney that knows anything about rules and where Oh really? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So are you saying that Matt McDonald doesn't understand the rules? Okay. Can he finish? It doesn't matter. He absolutely he knows yeah. what happened here. Okay. I would like to hear the rest of what, what the attorney has to say about this. I mean, he case, was attacked. I want to hear the defense. In that case we tried the, 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 the defendant in the case, he was convicted in this court in a trial. He then appealed it. A judge dismissed the case. We appealed that. Based on a COVID order, we had a time frame to appeal the case that was extended to April 20th. We filed our appeal on the 17th. There was a subsequent COVID order that said there was non-jurisdictional issues that were not included in the original COVID order, 
And so we elected to dismiss our appeal. We then moved, we are now going to move to refile the complaint pursuant to rule, I believe it's 15.1, that allows us to do that. It told us the statute of limitations. That case was retried here. That is a much quicker venue for the victim and for the witnesses in this case than going back and issuing a year and a half, two year appeal process and then coming back and have to try it. So it's just specious and just you, you don't know what you're talking about and you don't I absolutely know, know what I'm talking about this on this and you know what and I asked for a, a full report on this I, and I Matt speak. asked you to uh, I just let you speak I I'm speak going I'm I am yes. going to I, speak I, I, too okay I'll let you get a chance but can he please finish he I don't he hasn't finished yet yeah this case the old cases were were consolidated and they were told and we talked to the victim in the case who moved out of state your complaints about how it was screwed up was no, nothing to do with us nothing to do with me the it victim was wasn't time. called and i verified with you know, tut that she should have been called Second. And, and I, i'm going to say something um, here this do, it, city do it attorney, after the meeting mayor this, you're holding this, this up and we attorney. don't we don't agree with anything you're saying so wait and all you got to do is interrupt this gentleman you will not He's let him talk the whole I time i make a motion we adjourn this meeting that's fine i'll continue have a motion. Uh, video have a second this. second all those in favor say aye 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 opposed got, say nay you guys do a lot of shouting at women yes they do also me, you should see this was, closed doors this was made political by a turn 